school basketball is on the air. The Oneida Indians, the Scott Highlanders, with Tim Smith, Rick Keaton, and their entire broadcast teams. This is Tennessee's most complete high school basketball coverage. Sponsored by United Cumberland Bank, Scenic Foods, El Rey, Ray Zacks, South Fork Physical Therapy, Lumber King, Potter's Ace Hardware, Salvage LLC, Highland Telephone and Highland Communications, Mark's Family Pharmacy, TNT Car Wash, and by title sponsor, First National Bank. Produced by the IH Sports Network, high school basketball begins now. Hello, Highlander fans. Welcome to tonight's matchup. As the Highlanders go on the road in a non-district matchup with the Powell Panthers. And we've got the doubleheader, girls and boys, coming your way as the Highlanders take on the Powell Panthers tonight. You're, you can follow Highlander basketball tonight on the IH Sports Net, IHSportsNet.com. You can check us out there. Go to our Facebook and uh, YouTube accounts. You can follow us and tune in to tonight's ball games. And I'll mention right now that also we'll be at home tomorrow night as the Highlanders take on Camel County, and we'll broadcast both of those games for you, both the audio and video tomorrow night just like it is tonight it's a good matchup for the highlanders coming into the night the boys have played pal earlier in the season uh that game went back to uh november the 20th and our highlanders at highlander gym in the hall of fame play day defeated pal 76 to 69 well a couple of things have changed since then a the highlanders have lost the game and b pal has uh been able to get a couple of their football players in so that's uh a little bit of a different shape for us right there. So we'll see how it all works out tonight. But nevertheless, let's look at the setup for tonight's situation. The Lady Highlanders come into the night with an overall win-loss record, four wins, seven losses. Uh, our last game on Friday night, we failed to Anderson County in a district matchup, 39-35 after leading at halftime. With the loss, the Highlanders even their district record at one win and one loss. For our boys, we defeated Anderson County the other night, 73 to 50. That score is a lot closer than the game actually was as our boys improved to nine wins and one loss on the season. However, we did pick up that district win and we're one and one in the district. The Highlander girls coached by Jake Wright, assisted by Morgan Boyd and Emily Markham. Our boys coached by Jordan Jeffers and assisted by Derek Boshears along with Grant Markham. Promises to be a good matchup here, of course, Halls. They remember, the boys that is, Coach Gary Barnes, uh, one-year head coach at Oneida High School. He's the head coach at uh, Powell High School for the boys. Coach Barnes, Powell Panthers have a two and five overall record in their district. They are one and one. Their losses in the district has been to Oak Ridge, 81 to 71, and their win has been over West, 80 to 72. They bring a good pair of players in. Eli Walls, a 6'5 guard. He has a Millican offer to attend college. And Aiden Green, who's a junior guard, coming in off the football team. And that leads us to the Powell Panther football team, who just won the state 5A championship, I guess, two weeks ago. And it depends on how many footballers came in from the Powell football team into their basketball program. The Powell girls, Coached by John Fisher, a good record for them. They are 6-0 to start the season in the region. They are 2-0 with wins over Oak Ridge and West. Uh, the only common opponent, uh, well, the boys have no common opponent, but the girls, they did play. Uh, the common opponent has been uh, Powell, I guess. Well, it's not a common opponent. I'll take it back. We did see the Powell girls earlier at Scott High School as they defeated Oneida 86 to 60 in the Scott Hall of Fame play day. So that's where we saw the Powell girls at, and we saw the Powell boys because we played them. So that gets you set a little bit as to the matchups tonight between our Highlanders and the Powell Panthers. Let's go ahead and let's take a short break here. We'll try to take a, we'll say a 60 second break. When we come back after these messages, we'll take you down and get you ready for tonight's starting lineups.
Welcome back into our Highlander pregame show as the girls' team's on the floor getting ready. Powell will be in their home white uniforms. The Highlanders will be in our visiting black uniforms. Once again, the Highlanders coached by Jake Rout, assisted by Morgan Boyd and Emily Markham. It's our pleasure once again to bring you Highlander basketball on the IH Sports Network, ihsports.net. And go there and follow our links to find a Facebook and a YouTube link. Rick Keaton with your play-by-play tonight. Longtime partner here, Woody Keaton. He's in. He's going to be keeping score. So I don't have to necessarily worry about my <laughs> math. My math was off Friday night. <laughs> we had a question me after the game. I sent her my score sheet, and uh, she said nope. she got it figured out. And we were off a couple points somewhere between players right there. But nevertheless, I am, and we are never the official <laughs> Highlander scores. Exactly. It, that belongs to the home team book. Woody, good to have you with yeah, us tonight. It's good to be here, buddy. It's been a while, but, you know, it's a good opportunity that I could come. So, you know, I want to, you know, support the team ever how I can, you know. Uh, still working on the – I mean, Coach Jeffers was over there talking. He wanted to know if I got my stuff done for the school for the 50 years of basketball. But, you know, I'm still working on it. It's, uh, it's not been easy, but it's been great. It's been fun to sit there and go back the years that me and you was there earlier and go through all that stuff. That's fun to go through and, and realize where we've been, who we, we have played, and who you know the kids that's come through our program. It's been a joy in doing that. Yes, to reminisce and see names and people that you hadn't thought of in years and years and years. Exactly. And uh, we appreciate that work, and some point in time it'll be finished. Some point in time we'll try to make it in a, in a format that right. we can copy, share, or whatever with right. people, and we'll see how that all goes. But right now it's basketball in a non-district matchup between our Highlanders and the Powell Panthers. Up first, Lady Highlanders and Lady Panthers taking the court. In the first half, Lady Highlander basket will be to our right as you look at your television screen or maybe follow us on radio. Uh, their basket to our right and the Powell basket to our left. Right now, let's go ahead and let's get ready to take our final break in our Highlander pregame. Nope, we're not going to do that. We're just going to get right into the starting lineups. Right into it. Now for the Lady Highlanders, getting to start number 11, Julie Lou Allen. Number 15, Julie Lawson. Number 23 is Brittany Morrow. Number 24 is Annaline Woodward. Number 32 is Elena Duncan. Elena Duncan, Julie Lou Allen are seniors. Julie Lawson, a sophomore, Brittany Moore, a freshman, and Annaline Woodward, a junior. Now we'll get the starting lineup for Powell, the Lady Panthers coach again. Uh, the coach is John Fisher. Getting the start tonight is number one, Cassidy Hill. Number three is Reagan Trum. Trum, a senior, <clears throat> averaged 22 points a game last year for Powell. Number five is Edison Smith. Number 10 is Cassie Shackley. Wow. And number 20 is Elena Schroeder. I'll try to get number 10, Cassie Shackley. I'll just say Shackley. It's S A K K L E H. Shackley. Good luck. Just hope I don't have to say it. Thank you. <laughs> We're ready for this girls' matchup to get underway as the Lady Highlanders, Brittany Moore, steps in center circle. She's there. The tip is going to be controlled in the front court. That'll be Powell with the basketball. Out on front, they're working around the perimeter to Trump. Trump turns, shoots a three, and there it is. Trump, first basket of the game, and the Powell Panthers take the early 3-0 lead over our Lady Highlanders. Moore with the basketball. Her pass over to the right side. It went off the foot. Um, I believe Schroeder, it'll be Highlander basketball in front of the Powell bench. Inbounds pass, Powell. Where are you going there, buddy? Yeah, he gave it to the wrong team. <laughs> I was looking down there and I'm thinking, well, who's inbounding the ball? Normally for us, it's Julie Lou Allen. And now it is Julie Lou Allen to inbound the basketball. <laughs> into Woodward, deep in the right corner. Drives along the baseline, bounce pass low to Woodward. Forces her way in, shot is no good. Woodward fights for it. Comes up with a rebound. Her shot is then blocked, saved along the baseline. Powell comes out with it. They'll push it ahead with Schroeder. Drove around her defender, lost the dribble, picks it back up and couldn't save it. Turnover, possession going to the Lady Highlanders. 
Again, the starters for the Highlanders, Julie Llewellyn, Elena Duncan, Julie Lawson, Annaline Woodward, and Brittany Morrow. Things we've got to be aware of tonight, our post players can not get in foul trouble. Bounce pass goes to Woodward. Turns a corner on her defender, has her shot blocked. Finding for it, that's Woodward. I'm sorry, that's Duncan with the ball. Soft pass it, tried to get it to Woodward, and Powell with a steal. Schroeder kicks it over on the right side. That's the driving trum, and she's going to run into a defender and be called for the foul. And I just mentioned the fact about our post players. Could not afford to get in foul trouble. That foul will be on Elena Duncan. First, team first. At the foul line, it's Trum. The first free throw is good. Trum now with four points. We're underway in the first quarter as Trum shoots and makes her second free throw. Reagan Trum. As I said, she averaged something like 22 points a game last year, five rebounds, um, two steals, two blocks a game. Undoubtedly the leader for the Powell girls. That is Moore driving in. Her running shot is blocked. Powell with the basketball. They'll push it ahead. This is Heel. Tries to shovel a pass at the Highlanders' touch last. On the inbound for the Highlanders will go man-to-man. Inbound the ball. That's Schroeder. Schroeder gets it in to Trum. Come back to midcourt. Woodward on her. Pass into the paint. Posting going up strong around her defender. And the layup was there by number 10. Number 10, Cassie Shakler. Hunters trying to work their offense. To the left corner. Moore drives along the baseline. Her pass tries to get it into Allen. It is intercepted there. 7 0. And Lady Hunters trying to get the ball back from Powell. Powell with that lead now make it 10 0 out of the left corner. That was Trum again with her second three pointer of the first quarter. Hunters need to take their time with the basketball. Do not force the issue because we've had two or three of our shots blocked and a couple of passes intercepted. High screen, Woodward. The pass goes in the left corner. That'll be Lou Allen. Her three is long. Taken by Trum. Trum pushes. This is a one-on-three break, and Trum goes up the left side. Forced to miss the shot. I, I give a lot of credit there to Woodward, getting back well defensively. Moore in the front court. Has Lawson on the right corner. Back outside Moore, deep right wing. To Woodward from the foul line. Wants to drive. Needs help. Shovels the pass. Had it deflected back to her. Now Moore wants to drive. Gives it up to Lou Allen. Lou Allen on the left wing, back to Lawson. Lawson over on the right side. This will be Duncan, her three up. It's an air ball. Fighting for it, that's Lou Allen who gets it. Her shot up off the glass, no good. Rebound for Powell. Four minutes, 45 seconds to go in the first quarter. And Powell, they lay it off the glass as the outlet pass went to Trum in the front court. And now Coach Wright says we better take a timeout. With our score now, Powell 12, Highlander 0. We'll take a timeout with the two teams and be back right after this break. The Highlanders with the basketball as we come back from their timeout. Brittany Morrow with the ball. Walks it across midcourt, drives up the right side. Her pass saved by Lawson, right side front court. Now back in the corner, goes to Morrow. Wants to drive along the baseline, and she does. Toss it across to Lou Allen. Her shot blocked. Woodward took the ball out of the air, and now she needs help. Drives strong with the left hand. Good. Annaline Woodward. First points for the Lady Howlers, those from Annaline Woodward. It's a 12-2 Powell lead. They have the basketball with now four minutes left in the first quarter. The ball deflected. That's strong. Excuse me, that's Mora with the steal. She goes strong up the left side, up off the glass. Shot is no good. Powell comes down with the rebound, and Woodward reaches in, has the takeaway, gets it back, drives her layup, won't go. Then Lou Allen had it. She might have been fouled. Now a long lead pass goes to Powell. Driving for the layup. It's no good, and there's going to be a foul. The trail player will be Elena Duncan to pick up the foul. It's her second, team second. And going to the line, number 11, Talia Barton for 
P, uh, for Powell. Barton's first free throw is no good. Once again, offensively, the Highlanders would have had a couple of chances to score and could not get the ball to drop through the net for him. They just rolled right around the rim and didn't want to go. As Barton makes the second of her two free throws, it gives Powell once again an 11-point lead. 13-2, Powell with the ball. Sorry, Powell with the lead, Islanders with the ball. High screen, Moore dribbles down on the left side, lost the dribble, picked it back up. The rebound inside, that's Duncan. Forces a shot up, second time got her own rebound. She couldn't make the shot. This time the ball comes back out. Powell, they release on the fast break, and that's Trum driving down. Soft Crippy off the right glass for Reagan Trum. Trum already with 10, 11, 12 first half. First quarter points. Yep. Once they release, they got a wide open layup on the other end. Lou Allen, a good position inside, has her shot blocked as she went up for the layup. Now Trum stops the fast break, launches a three, long rebound, comes back outside to Trum. Lobs it over. Got it right back outside deep on the right wing. Hunter's playing 3 2 zone. Pump fake. That's floor. Schroeder. Schroeder. Drives inside, shot was no good, and fighting for her and putting the offensive rebound back up. Reese Rowland, number 24. A lot bigger in her post than what we've got, and they're showing it. Yes, indeed. And for the Highlanders, sometimes the expression is you can't keep going up against the trees. Yeah. As Wilbur drives along the baseline, turns in for the reverse right-hand layup off the left glass, good. Woodward with four points, all four of the Lady Highlander points. Powell 15, I'm sorry, Powell 17, Highlanders four. Schroeder, they work it around to Trum from the left corner, and that's a needless foul there, and, and Elena Duncan. Trum had already put up the shot, and Duncan turns and bodies are out. You know, like the long rebound is going to come all the way back in the corner. But that is a big foul against the Highlanders as Reagan Trum goes to the line to shoot three free throws. The first one is no good. Coach Wright ready with some subs on the sideline. Second free throw by Trum is good. For the Highlanders, Jalen Young, number 12, and also Zoe Terry, number four. They check in. One of them replaces Duncan, and the other one replaces Lawson. Reagan Trum's third free throw. This one got a shooter's roll on it. Big lead right now in the first quarter, 19-4. to 15-point advantage for Powell. The Highlanders trying to cut into that. This is Moore from the right wing. She drives in. The left-hand layup is no good. Fighting for the ball. Trying to keep it alive. Powell somehow manages to save it along the baseline. Driving, that's Trum. Moore got a hand on it, but Trum with her strength just goes up and forces that short running jumper up and in. Brittany now with the basketball. On the right wing, drives to the left. Reverses back inside, tosses the ball over to Zoe Terry. Nice little 17-foot jump shot, but it's no good. Picking the pocket, that's Jalen Young in the backcourt. Instant energy when Young comes on the floor. She drives, she's going to draw the foul. And Jalen Young will shoot two free free throws for the Lady Highlanders as the foul was on Barton. Brittany had the shot right there. She just turned right back around to the inside. She had a wide wide open jump shot. Two for Jalen Young, the junior. This first one is good. Fifth point on the board for the Highlanders. It comes with uh, 57 seconds left in the first period. Second free throw, rattles and drops in for it. Got to feel if we keep, if we continue to be aggressive as we are right now, that's Jalen Young with the steal at midcourt, and then she's going to be fouled. That foul will be on Smith. Addison Smith for Powell. Non-shooting foul, Highlander ball, baseline right side. Inbound, that's Lou Allen. Lobs it out on top to Woodward from the top of the key. Woodward 
trying to decide what to do with it. She wants to drive and instead gives it to Lou Allen. Her three out of the right corner. Hits the iron, comes off. Woodward tried to tie it up. Pulled away by Powell. Smith with the ball. Again, young guards with player to player up the court. Coach Wright, since the last time out, has gone man to man. Quick pass along the baseline. The shot is no good. More up. The rebound for the Highlanders. 20 seconds left in the first period. Brittany from the right corner. Bounce pass in to Woodward. Couldn't handle the ball. Picks up to tie it up. Knocked out of bounds, Powell. 11 seconds remaining. The Highlanders will inbound the basketball. Baseline, right side, extended from underneath their basket. Lawson and Lou Allen looks for help. Gets the ball outside to Mora. Now looking at the clock, there's seven seconds to go. I'm not sure she realizes that. Now she'll drive to the foul line. Back outside, Woodward. Long three by her. Shot is no good. Rebound tied up. And that is the end of the first quarter of play in this Girls basketball contest. The Powell Lady Panthers 21 are visiting Scott Highlanders 6. As always, we thank all of our sponsors for bringing you high school basketball on the IH Sports Network, where we follow the Scott Highlanders and the United Indians throughout the course of this 2021 22 season. More basketball on IH Sports Network tomorrow night as the Highlanders will be at home to take on Campbell County. By the way, uh, Oneida's playing tonight too, right? Oneida's yeah. on the air. IHSports.net where you can follow the Indians tonight. It will be Lady Highlander basketball trailing 21 to six. For the Highlanders, Zoe Terry stays on the floor, Jalen Young. Rachel Garrett checks in and Bree Jeffers. Rachel a sophomore, Brianna is a junior. Young. Tries to bounce pass inside. It's deflected. Trying to get the steal. The Highlanders do take the ball away at midcourt. Young over to Mora. Deep from the left wing. Her three up. It's an air ball. Can we save it? Jeffers tries. Could not. See with this group on the floor. What we do. Coach Wright goes back to the 3-2 zone. Out on top of the three will be Brittany Mora. A hand back. Smith with the basketball. Kicks it down to Hill. Now back outside to Smith. I'm sorry, that was Trum. Trum gets it back. Her three from deep on the left wing is no good. He's over the back. He's certainly over the back. <laughs> from the right wing, long three-point try. Yes, that's good by Elena Schroeder. Powell extending their lead. It's now 24-6 over the Lady Highlanders. Morrow dribbles to the right wing. Reverses. Picks up the dribble to Garrett. She'll drive to the right baseline. Backs in. Her shot from underneath the basket is no good. Taken out of the air. That'll be Reagan Trum and Powell. Trum. Cross-court pass to the right side. They work it back out. Now down to the corner. This is Hill driving in. Denied by Jeffers. The ball batted around, and the Highlanders come up with it. Jalen Young slows the brakes. This is about a one-on-four fast break, so <laughs> I heard Coach Wright yelling up here, <laughs> pull it up, pull it up. <laughs> and she did, and the Highlanders set up their half-court offense. Young lobs to Moore, driving along the left baseline, picks up the dribble into Jeffers. She goes strong to the hoop, and up and in on that little floating eight-footer by Brianna Jeffers. 24 to eight, Highlanders need another stop this trip down the floor against Powell. Out of the right corner, long three, boom, that's good there. Schroeder, her second three-pointer. Powell now with four trays in the first half, which has 5.35 to go. The pass intercepted, going quickly the other way, that's Smith. Smith goes in against Terry. Terry call for the foul. Smith makes the basket and will be at the line, plus one for Addison Smith. Smith's free throw is no good. Ball's tipped back outside, batted up, kept alive. This is Mara up the left side for the Lady Highlanders. Against the double team, kicks the ball inside, nice pass, and Zoe Terry scores off the right glass, and the assist would be to Brittany Mora. 
It's still a big lead for Powell at 29-10. I say it again, Hunters just need defensive stops. From the corner trying to drive, a little pass goes in the paint and the layup left side. Shackley. Moore slows the tempo down. Four minutes, 45 seconds to go first half. Moore reverses to the foul line. Gave it up to Jeffers. Out to Terry. Terry drives on the right baseline. That'll be Garrett. Wants to drive out to Jeffers. Might have walked with it. Takes it all the way in. If she does, it's tied up. They'll call a jump ball. The possession arrow favoring Powell. Honors again, that's Trum with it. Drives into the paint, kicks it out on the left wing. They gave it up. Trum along the left baseline, goes in strong. Coming over, Jeffers had the block, but I don't think the foul was on her. Did they call it on uh, Rachel that time? Yeah. Rachel Garrett. The first team fifth. Reagan Trum goes back to the foul line. Speed free throw six and seven for her in the first half. Free throw six was good. Her second toss. This one also good. Making the pair. Big lead pal. Holland's trying to cut into it every chance they can get here, but we've got to find somebody to score. We've tried inside, not been very successful there. We've tried outside and haven't been able to make the shots. That's Garrett driving down right side of the jumper. Off the iron, it's no good. Long outlet pass. This goes to Trum. Trum drives and has the layup at the other end. About five outlet passes. Once we go sag in, we just ain't getting back, and that's about five times they've shot layups. And while you were making that comment, that's 20 first half points for Trum. Yep. The jumper right corner, it's an air ball. Taken on the backside by the aforementioned Reagan Trump. She'll handle the ball herself as she kicks it ahead. And Smith with the ball, comes back to Trump. Trump's three-pointer is no good. Jaden Young comes back, rebound for the Highlanders. Going the other way, Jalen only knows one speed. Kicks it ahead to the driving Zoe Terry. Terry with her second basket in the first half. And Jalen Young with that assist. From the top of the key, Powell tries a long three. The shot is no good. Mara hustles back, gets the rebound over at the far sideline. Takes it in the paint, a spin move, turns, lobs it up. It's off the iron, no good. Jeffers fights for it, comes down with the ball, has her shot blocked, comes back out and controls it for the Highlanders. We reset the offense. Now this will be more the three out of the right corner, no good. Trum with the long rebound. Tried to draw a foul, could not get the official to blow the whistle. Now Trump goes up against Jalen Young. Young trying to take the ball from her. Now Trump squares, shoots the three. Shot is no good, long rebound controlled by Powell. Back to Trump, she'll drive the paint this time. She goes in. And no whistles by the official until the ball bounces out of bounds. <laughs> I was expecting lot. one of three Highlanders to get that foul exactly. call. Exactly, a lot of contact. Brittany Moore out for the Highlanders, and Julie Lawson checks back in. Highlanders will play man on the inbounds from the right baseline for Powell. Having trouble to get the ball in, they lob it out near midcourt to Hill. Hill drives, kicks it in the corner to Schroeder. Schroeder's three is good. Schroeder with three of those trays here in the first half. That just increases the Powell lead. It's 38 to 12. Eddie Highlanders with the basketball. Two minutes to go first half. Pass from Garrett outside Young. Young hands it back to Lawson. Tries to lob it into the posting. Jeffers could not get the ball to her. Young saves it in the corner. And Coach Wright calls a timeout. Let's join the teams during the break. One minute, 48 seconds to go in the first half. It's the home team pal, Lady Panthers 38. Our visiting Scott Lady Highlanders 12. We'll be back after this message. I did not want to mention it. Well, I should have mentioned it earlier. It's not that I didn't want to. I just didn't have it on my notes. But the Highlanders playing up in classification tonight. Probably 4A school, Highlanders 3A school. I'm not making excuses, by the no, way. I can see why they beat Oak Ridge. Yes. <laughs> I saw that score and I thought, hmm. Yes. 
Hollins with the basketball after our timeout. This is Lawson down to Garrett in the right corner. She turns the corner. Young comes up with the basketball, has it stripped away along the baseline, then Young takes it right back, drives for the layup. Shot is no good. Brianna Jeffers comes up with the ball out to Zoe Terry. Her three is up. No good. Off the backboard, Powell controls the rebound bound and the basketball. They kick it ahead. Driving, that's Barton. Barton's pass back outside to Schroeder. Trump, pump fake, drives. Gave up the ball along the baseline. Now out on the wing, driving in. That running baby hook, half shot, Cassidy Hill. First points for her. Jeffers with the ball. Outside guarded by Trump. Now Terry, she'll drive along the baseline. Her shot is blocked, taken away in the air. A lot of out body. to Trum. <laughs> Trum around Garrett, her defender, lays it high off the glass. It's no good. Recovered by Powell. The ball's on the floor, still fighting for it. Who has it? And the Highlanders come out with it miraculously. And on the floor, Jeffers and Terry kept it alive and get it out to the Highlanders. And we have a possession opportunity with 20 seconds to go in the first half. Over to Lawson, it threw her hands out of bounds. Turnover and possession going back to Powell. They have a very, very comfortable 40 to 12 lead. The final 16 seconds of the first half. Trum with the ball. Down the middle, has it blocked inside. Either Terry or Garrett got the block. I don't know. Either Terry we'll, or Garrett got right, the right. block. We'll give them half one apiece. Yeah, there, there you go. Powell ball, nine seconds to go from the baseline. The pass comes into Trump. She drives in the paint around the defender and off the glass, Reagan Trump. Makes it too easy. She does, and the Hollers could not get a shot off ahead of the buzzer. At halftime, it'll be the home team Powell Panthers with this very comfortable 42-12 to 12 lead over the Lady Highlanders. So they have built a 30-point lead. I hate using this expression, but just to call it fairly, Woody, they made it look easy. Definitely. Uh, they run well. They rebound well. They pass shoot well. The they shoot outside well. Uh, they able to drive inside and get it to the basket. And Trum, I, I knew she was a good player. I'd read a lot of stuff about her. But she must be about six foot tall. I was, yeah. I was expecting a five foot six, five foot seven young lady out there. True. She's about six foot tall and handles the ball well and goes inside with it. And certainly the driving force behind the Powell Panthers. Let's go ahead and we'll take this extended commercial break. they give us a chance to catch our breath. We'll add up the scoring when we come back after these messages. We'll have a look at the first half scoring, comments on the first half, and what the Lady Hounds need to do in the second half. Then when we return after the break. Welcome back to Powell High School. Non-district matchup, Monday night pair of games for the Highlanders. On the road to Powell High School, girls, we've reached halftime, and the Powell Lady Panthers dominating first half performance, leading our Highlanders 42-12 to at halftime. Uh, the first thing we just need to do, Woody, let's jump over and let's take a look at that first half scoring. All right, for Hill, for Powell, Hill has uh, two points, no fouls. Uh, Trim has 22 points. She has no fouls. She's 6 uh, 7 from free throw line, 2 out of 3. She has two threes. Uh, Smith has two points, one foul. Uh, Sackley. That? Yeah, there you go. I'm glad you said that because I struggled with I'm that. I'm not sure that's the way you pronounce it, okay. but I pronounce it Sackley. Okay. She had four points, no fouls. Broadley had one point, one foul. Uh, Schroeder had nine points and all three or threes. And Roland had two points. And no fouls, total of 42 points. Uh, they had uh, 21 points in the first quarter, 21 in, in the second quarter. I didn't even pay any attention to that. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the Highlanders had six in the first quarter and six, six in, in the, the second, second quarter. quarter. There we go. Yep. Uh, Julia Allen has no points, no fouls. Julia Young has two points, uh, no fouls. Uh, Alan Woodward has four points, no fouls. Uh, Zoe Terry has four points and one foul. And Bree Jeffers has two points and no fouls. Uh, Jill Lawson has no points. Uh, Brittany Morrow has no points. Uh, Leonard Duncan has no points and three fouls. Rachel Garrett has no point and one foul, total of 12. And other than Elena Duncan, 
a couple of other players with one foul, but that's it. And Elaine, in the last couple of games, two or three games, maybe has had some foul issues. Yeah. And then the two down here was just boxing down. There wasn't that much pressure after the girls shot the ball. It's just, I guess, the body contact. Mm-hmm. I guess referees didn't really like the the body contact as much on her like that. That, that and, can go either way. And more and more I'm seeing defensive players when – Somebody is behind that three-point line and they shoot a three-pointer. Right. They, for some reason, they feel compelled to whip into them, turn the body and right. butt them out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And those are a real wasted foul right there because the official will call that every time. A couple things happen. Our, our player picks up the foul. Right. The other player shoots three free throws. Right. Then, you know, them five free throws come early in the first quarter. And after that, mm-hmm. I don't think is very few. It might have been one or two in the whole second quarter. So. Right. But, you know, our shot uh, selection, I mean, that was the girls, would, once they get in the paint, would shoot the ball instead of throwing the ball back out to somebody, you know, it's 10 foot from them, but well, we got a six or seven foot, you know, jump shot, and they're wide open. Mm-hmm. We'll talk more about the game. Let's take a 60-second break here. This After these messages, we'll be back to set you up for the second half in the girls' game. Halftime score, our Lady Highlanders 12, the Powell Lady Panthers 42. Well, we want to talk a little bit about the Lady Highlanders coming up here in the second half, Woody. Well, it's not that we've had a lot of turnovers. We haven't had turnovers. Powell has made hay off of getting rebounds, blocking shots, and quickly getting it to the other end of the court. So for the Lady Highlanders, it's about composure, good shot selection, make those shots, and not give the opportunity for Powell by making shots to rebound and go. Right. You know, they've had so many runouts, and – they probably got 10 block shots mm-hmm. in, the, in the first half. But, you know, the runouts really, I mean, that creates a lot of points. I mean, you know, from a close game, you get all the runouts. I mean, you know, look, at it's you know, a 30-point lead already. But, you know, just, uh, you know, try to win the, the second half. I mean, take some good shots, uh, you know, and uh, quit going so far inside the paint because they're a lot bigger than us. And when that happens, I mean, you know, they're going to block their shot. And then we're not, we're just standing around, and not really going after right. the rebounds. After we make uh, a good shot, we're, we're still not rebounding very well. And you made, you made a good point there in the break. Find those 10, 15-foot range shots where nobody's in your face. Right. Shoot and make. I just, I just wish we'd you know, turn around and shoot and get confidence in the girls about shooting the shot. Don't worry about somebody else's. Get your confidence back in where you can make a good open you know, jump shot. To start the second half. It'll be Lady Highlander basketball. Lady Highlanders in their black uniforms, Powell in their white. Lady Highlander basketball will be to our left as we start the third quarter. Elena Duncan with the three fouls in, along with Annaline Woodward, Julie Lawson, uh, Julie Lou Allen, and Brittany Morrow, who has the basketball crossing midcourt with it. Bounce pass to Woodward from the key on the left side. Drives in, a little running. Eight-foot jumper is no good. Fighting for the rebound. It's tied up. And the possession arrow going to Powell. I did see that. I mean, hit or miss, either one of them. We take it to good, good shot, good, shot. good elevation on the shot. Right. Trump, little screening go, and off the layup inside was Cassidy Hill. This will be Morrow dribbling down as she gets the ball inside to Duncan. She'll drive in the paint hard off the glass, picked up by Powell. They'll go the other way with it. Trump steps back behind the line on the right wing. Shot is no good. Duncan, the rebound, needs help. Moore is back there to handle the ball for the Hollers into the front court. To the left wing, Julie Lawson turns. The three is no good. Rebound. That was Cassidy Hill. Hill handles it herself. It's a one-on-two break. Hill goes against Moore. Up off the glass, won't go. Powell with the offensive rebound and the putback. 23, maybe? Yep. 20. Like 20, yeah. Schroeder. Schroeder. The Powell number's a little hard to see, aren't they? Yep. As Duncan drives, the defensive player got a hand into it. That would have been Shackley. And when she did that, It was tied up. The official below us called the jump ball. Highlanders with possession to the left corner. That's Julie Lewell, and her three off the back iron is no good. Schroeder with the ball in the front court, lobs it to the left wing. All right, that's Hill. 
Hill stops, shoots a shot. Duncan probably picked up her fourth foul there, but no whistle by the official. Outside the ball comes to Hill again, drives the left baseline, tosses it back to the right wing. The three from there, no good. Rebound again controlled by Powell. That's two offensive rebounds on this possession for him. Now Trump drives inside. Powell still keeping possession of the ball from the left corner. Long three there, no good. Another rebound inside, that's Hill. The cutter down into the paint shot was no good as Annaline Woodward picks up the foul. And Addison Cassie, or excuse me, Casey Shackley to the foul line. Woodward's first, team first in the second half. And so Shackley with a pair of free throws. Clock is stopped with five minutes, 50 seconds remaining, third quarter. Toss is up, good. Did they credit her with a basket? Or did she make she two free throws and make? She just the two free throws. Okay, I wasn't looking for one of them. Mara down the left side, wants to turn the corner, cut off. Outside to Duncan, pump faking, she walks with the basketball. Our official scorekeeper working with an intern down to the scorer's table tonight. You know, we're trying to use this same person as a <laughs> broadcasting intern, as a scorekeeping intern, and driving with high pass off the off of the left glass would have been Sackley. Powell in a man-to-man. That's all they've played in the game, a little sort of give and go, turning up off the glass, Woodward. Nice individual effort by Annaline Woodward to pick up her sixth point. 50 to 14, Highlander still trailing, however, or Powell still leading, if you prefer. We invite you to, as I say that, the shot inside was blocked. Fighting for it again, then over the back. That was exactly who probably missed a couple of easy crippies inside. But once again, I invite you to tune in to the IH Sports Network to catch our coverage of Highlander and Indian basketball throughout the course of the 2021-22 season. This is Mara with the ball from the right wing. Picks up her dribble and needs somebody to come help her. Bounce pass that goes to Woodward. The aggressive drive to the baseline and Woodward is foul. One. Schroeder. Schroeder. And in the act of shooting, the official says, and Annaline Woodward would go to the foul line to shoot a pair. Only the third and fourth free throws of the game for the Lady Islanders. We've got four and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. The first toss, no good. Annaline with a basketball for her second free throw. This one up and good. Trum with a basketball deep on the left wing. Don't think she won't shoot it from there, she will, as Mora has her man to man. The pass comes to the left side and thrown wide of the Powell player, which was Smith. The turnover by Powell, one of their few of the game. Have more this quarter than they have in the whole Probably. first half. <laughs> now, it looks like Powell will pick up in a half-court trap. Hollers beat it with a pass. Woodward wants to dribble against two, shoves it over to Lawson. Her three from the right corner is no good. Woodward is there, followed it up, couldn't get the shot to go. Ball's batted around. Lou Allen comes out. Hollers regain control and set up their offense. To the right side, that's Lawson again with a three. Through the iron, no good. Blue Allen with the rebound back up. Shot in and out, no good. The other way, Powell with the basketball. Shackley gave it up to Trump. Reagan Trump guarded by Duncan in it. The bounce actually went off of Duncan. Duncan sort of feigned her a little bit. The ball went off of Elena's foot. Powell ball. A couple of subs in for the Lady Panthers. Inbounds pass comes into the right corner. Woodward doing a good, good job defensively on Hill. Ball back out on top. Hollins flying to the basketball. The jumper out of the corner is no good. Powell, they have that long rebound and driving in and laying it off the glass with Schroeder. 
good to see in the second half she can shoot something besides threes. Yeah. As I said that, Mora turns the corner, has a layup opportunity, couldn't get it to go. Long rebound, Duncan picks it up for the Highlanders. Over to Mora in the right corner. She turns, squares, long three. Uh, off the glass, it's no good, and then deflected off of a couple of different players. Last touch by Powell. Lou Allen in the Lawson. Turn around, 16-foot jumper. Yes, good, Julie Lawson. First points in the game for Julie. 17th Lady Highlander point. Powell with the ball in the front court. Ball deflected, last touch by the Highlanders. Subs in for the Highlanders as Brianna Jeffers and Rachel Garrett subbing in the uh, post positions for Elena Duncan and Annaline Woodward. I thought the Highlanders got good effort out of, out of both Garrett and Jeffers in the first half. Right. Long three-point try is no good. Long rebound, pulled down in the left corner. Powell with the ball. Work it from the top of the key. Long three is no good. The rebound tipped outside. Mora has control of the ball. Highlanders want to push it, a pass ahead to Lou Allen. Steps back behind the line, shoots the three, shot is no good. Ball's recovered by Powell. Now to Trum, long three, no good. Rebound, batted around, picked up by Powell. That's Hill, her putback shot is no good. Tries it again, yes, that one is good by Cassidy Hill. The jumper left wing in and out. It's Lawson's shot. This is a two on three fast break. Over to Trum. Trum from the left wing or three. Yes, rattles that one in. The third three pointer of the game by Reagan Trum. One minute, 35 seconds left in the third quarter. Powell on top, comfortable lead. The bounce pass inside to Garrett, lays it off the glass. Driving in, that's Trum, and Brianna Jeffers steps in, ties her up, possession arrow in favor of Powell. Subs for the Highlanders as Jalen Young and Zoe Terry check in. They will replace Lou Allen and Mora. So Lawson stays on the floor, Julie Lawson, the sophomore. Powell ball from the right baseline. They lob out, top of the key, driving in, that's Hill. Scoops up the shot, it's no good. Garrett pulls down the rebound. Young crosses midcourt in a flash for the Highlanders. <laughs> Kicks it back outside to Terry. Clutch pump, three-pointer good. Zoe Terry. <laughs> got to feel comfortable. Got to feel confident. Got to make those outside shots. Yep. Less than a minute remaining third quarter. Wrap around pass. The jumper up off the glass, no good. Two players five for it. Taken away and put back up by Powell. I believe that was Shackley. Yep. Or Sackley, rather. Jalen Young, front court, drives left, lobs inside, intending it for Garrett. Garrett really didn't have position. The outlet pass, Powell, ahead. They throw it inside, blocked on the pass. That was Zoe Terry got a hand on it. The Islanders come down with it. 24 seconds left, third quarter. Jalen Young, the left-hander, wants to dribble left, now reverses back to the right side, has a screen there. I was looking for the final shot. Young lost the dribble, picks it up, goes in strong in the trip foul. That'll be um, Talia Barton picking up the foul. Going to the line, Jalen Young fouling the active shooting. She has two free throws. First one is no good. I was going to say in the first half, she was two for two. I thought I might jinx her, so I guess I should have said it anyway. But <laughs> she misses the first, has her second free throw here. Jalen's toss up, nothing but net on that one. Lady Highlanders 23, the Powell Panthers 59, however. The final five seconds, the floating jumper is no good. Fighting for the ball, it rolled out of bounds with seven tenths of a second to go. Theoretically, you can catch and shoot with seven-tenths of a second to go. But you have to be real good at it. Powell there trying it to get the ball in, and they got it to the right player. She got the shot off, just 
probably mm. short-armed it a little bit. <laughs> After three quarters of play, it's the Powell Lady Panthers 59, our Scott Lady Highlanders 23. We'll step aside for this break and be back with a fourth quarter after this message. First thing I want to note as we get ready for the fourth quarter is, A, the Highlanders scored more than six points in the quarter. They picked up nine. B, Powell scored less than 21 points in the quarter. They only scored 17. They did outscore the Lady Highlanders 17 to nine in the third quarter. They have still built this very convincing 59 to 23 lead. And this will be a continuous running clock throughout the fourth quarter. Highlander ball. On the floor for the Highlanders, Riley Price, number 20, along with Brianna Jeffers. Somebody else I don't have on the lineup. Number Macy two Douglas. would be uh, Gracie Lewis. Macy Douglas. Macy Douglas, there we go. The Highlanders out on the right wing. Excuse me, left wing, driving inside, trying to get some room inside, and it's tied up on the floor. The possession error will go to Powell. Number five, Melanie Spradlin on the court. Yep. Did I have that right? Yes. Yep. The other way quickly, Powell, that's Hill, drives in. Shot is no good. Ball's then picked up off the ground. I think that was Price recovering for the Highlanders. Jalen Young has her pocket pick from behind. That'll be Young going the other way. I'm not sure it's not Young. That's Barton. Barton has the layup. Ben's making a a change to make sure we get the right person here. Young with a basketball for the Highlanders. Outside against the Powell zone. This is Price driving along the baseline. It comes over to Caitlin Butts. The shot good. 20. Number 20 on that would be Riley Price. Point number five down is Caitlin Butts. This may be the first game I've seen her play, varsity game I've seen her play, and she'd been injured up until a week or so ago. One or five, okay. And the shot was no good by Powell. It went out of bounds. It will be the Highlander basketball as Powell with his up. So let's try to set the lineup for you for the Highlanders. Number 20 for the Highlanders is Riley Price on the court. Number 34 is Brianna Jeffers. Number five, Caitlin Butts. Number three for the Highlanders, Macy Douglas. And number 12, Jalen Young. And the pass intercepted as I said that. The Tigers recover again. The lob to Jeffers from the foul line. Tosses it back outside to Butts. Bounce pass over on the right wing. Driving, that's Douglas. Picks up her dribble and needs help. Cutting through the paint, that was Jeffers as she does so. Turns, her shot was then blocked. Butts chases down the rebound. She'll give it to Young. The Tigers reset their offense. Powell in a 2-3 zone. The ball deflected up and away from Macy Douglas. Five minutes, 10 seconds left in the girls basketball game. Running clock in the fourth quarter. Body bump outside, that would be Barton picking up the foul. Hollers Butts will inbound into Young. Over on the right wing, that's Butts. Drives, kicks it over to Price. In the corner, it goes to Douglas. Her shot no good. Jeffers skies in. Had control of the rebound, tied up by Powell. Hollers will retain possession from our right baseline. Douglas will key in for the Highlanders. Sub waiting for Powell. Does eventually work her way on to the court. That will be Elizabeth Nagy, number 23. Douglas inbound pass to Butts, her high arching three. Off the iron, it's no good. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Powell. Amy Flynn, who last touched it. Again, the Highlanders inbound the ball. Outside, Young. Puts it on the floor, kicks it to the left wing. That'll be Butts. Her shot this time blocked, goes after it. Ball's batted around, triggered around, kicked by a power player out of bounds. 
At least we're keeping the ball on our end of the floor. Four possession. Oh, she should have went to Brianna Boston. Jeffers got a high lob in. The jumper outside was blocked. Powell pulls it away, starts up the court. They'll drive hard up the left side all the way down and then drawing a foul. I think that might be Jeffers picking up the foul. Yep. It is Brianna Jeffers. to be rolling with the free throw, no good. For the Highlanders, checking in will be Gracie Lewis and Connor Hudson. Lewis is number two, Hudson is number 35. Second free throw up, that one's good by Rowland. It's now 62-25, Powell with the advantage over the Highlanders. Passes saved down in the corner by Price. Ball comes back outside. Driving, that's Lewis. Gave it up again, that's Riley Price. To Douglas, she left it for Butts. Butts deep on the right wing. Bounce pass low is intended for Hudson. Ball is deflected away, kicked outside. It will be a tie-up and possession going to Powell. Two minutes, 44 seconds, and the clock continuing to run. <laughs> and the two of them couldn't, but I did. <laughs> there's, a, there's, an old, there's an old saying about that, but, you know, it might be considered, you know, racist, so I won't go there. Carrying the ball with it, Powell is not called by the officials. They want the clock to run down, too. Two minutes, 15 seconds to go in the girls' game. Outside, deflecting the ball. Still Powell just keeping it outside. I think they're trying just to run outside, protect the basketball, keep it away from the Highlanders. As I say that, she turns, drives to the basket, flashes the pass back out in the left corner. The three is no good. Connor Hudson, the rebound for the Highlanders. Macy Douglas with a basketball. Kicks a long pass over to Caitlin Butts. Drove between two defenders in the paint, lost the dribble, tries to scoop up a shot there and draws the foul. Caitlin Butts will shoot a pair of free throws. 23, Hackey. 23 or 32? I don't really care. I'd say 23. Yeah, it doesn't I matter. You it was on, the foul was on Powell. Because <laughs> you can't tell whether which one's which. First free throw, Caitlin Butts is good. 62 26. Powell, that is 62. Lady Islanders, 26. Clock is stopped with a minute 36 remaining. Second free throw is good. Powell with the basketball. Pushing it into the front court. Stepping over, knocking the ball away. That's Lewis hustling after it. Could not control it for the Highlanders. Now Powell, again, this time Lewis will come up with a steal. Slows down the fast break, steps back, shoots a three, drew the iron, it's no good. Powell chases it down, and the Highlanders will, I believe, pick up a foul on the end line. No, I think he's giving us the ball. <laughs> By gosh, you're after right. After all that. After all that, yeah, but it's the inbounds pass. Into Douglas, into Hudson. As Hudson turns to shoot, she draws the foul, and Connor Hudson gets to shoot a pair of free throws. First toss no good by Connor, waiting on the basketball in her second shot. 45 seconds left in the girls' game. Powell with a comfortable win here tonight as Connor makes the second of her two free throws. Powell driving in the paint. They'll toss it back outside. It'll be an over and back violation. And the Hunters will get the ball. Clock continues to run. 30 seconds left in the game. Lewis kicks it left. That's the butts. Needs help. Back outside to Lewis. Driving in, the little shovel pass goes inside to Butts. Her shot underneath hits the bottom of the backboard. 
Powell the other way. Nine seconds to go. All I have to do is hold the clock for the final few seconds. And they will do that. Last shot ahead of the buzzer. I don't think it would have counted either way. But it's the Powell Panthers with a 62 to 28 victory over our Lady Highlanders tonight in a game where the Lady Highlanders struggle from start to finish. Uh, Coach Wright had a chance to go through his entire bench tonight, and I don't know if that's a positive or a negative, but that happened. The good thing about that was that the Lady Highlanders did win the third quarter, outscoring Powell 5-3. to three. Of course, by that time, each team went all the way deep into the bench players uh, 11 through 15, I think, for both teams. So we'll be back after this extended break. What do you have our end of the game scoring? We'll talk a little bit about the game, then we'll try to get you set for the boys' game coming up when we return in two minutes to the IH Sports Network. Welcome back to Highlander Basketball. It's our Lady Highlander post-game wrap-up. <clears throat> Lady Highlanders, unfortunately, fall to a very good, strong, very strong Pal Lady Panther team as the Lady Panthers defeat our Lady Highlanders 62 to 28. The Panthers led 21-6 after the first quarter, 42 to 12 at halftime, 59-23 after the third quarter, and once again the final was 62 to 28. Just a different layer of player, a different layer of level of basketball for the uh, Pal Panthers. Compared to our Lady Highlanders tonight, Woody. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And I can see, I understand why they, uh, you know, beat Oak Ridge. Man, when they got size, they got shooters. Uh, they rebound the ball well, block the ball well, get up and down the floor like you should, and uh, makes a whole lot of difference. Sure does. After the Lady Highlanders had won two in a row, they've now lost their last two games as the Lady Highlander record is now overall four wins, eight losses on the season. And for Powell, they improved their record to 7-0. and zero. Why don't we take a look at that end-of-the-game scoring summary? Uh, for Powell, uh, Hill had uh, six points. Uh, Trimley had 25 points. Uh, she had uh, three threes. Uh, Smith had two. Scastley had 10. Bartley had three. Uh, Schreller had 13. And Roland had three. Uh, for the game, they had six threes. They was 10 out of 14 for the game from the free throw line. For the Highlanders, let me get my papers here. Uh, Julia Young had uh, three points. Uh, Julia Lawson had two. Ann Lyle Warnwood had seven. Uh, Zoe Terry had seven. She had a three. Uh, Rachel Gary had two. Riley Price had two. Reed Jeffers had two. Uh, Hudson had one. And Butts had two. Total of 28. Uh, we had one three. We had seven out of ten from the free throw line. Well, as you can tell, they're not very good in terms of outside shooting. We just didn't have those opportunities. We had five made field goals in the first half, did the Lady Highlanders. And let me count here just to see five in the, the second, second half. half. Five in the second half. So, I mean, offense, when you're taking on good teams, offense has got to be able to score and not just at, at the free throw line, which Islanders shoot a good percentage there except we would have had to have got to the line 30 more times, <laughs> you know, to even make it a game here. And, and we give a lot of credit to Powell. Take nothing away from the Lady Highlanders. They played hard. Exactly. They started the game with the effort that they wanted to win. Powell just superior players, especially uh, the young lady, Reagan Trum, who had 22 first-half points leading the way for uh, Powell. If you take her 22 out of the mix right there, it would have been a 20 to 12 game at halftime. So, yeah. Trum, indeed a good player. Yeah. She averaged 22 points a game last season, so she's obviously on her average this season. So, our congratulations, pal, on the victory. The Lady Hounds will be playing tomorrow night at home against the Campbell County Lady Cougars. Game time will be girls 6.30 tomorrow night at Highlander Gym. Gosh, we've got a lot of time to go in this 22 games here. They put up 15 minutes in there. Uh, that would give me a good chance, I guess, as we look ahead at the Highlanders' schedule a little bit right now. We know the Highlanders have two more games left this week. Tomorrow night, I mentioned that will be against Campbell County. And on Friday, the Highlanders will travel to Clinton. That will be on the road at Clinton for a district matchup, our third straight Friday district game. That will be against Clinton. We're excited to see, I think, the Clinton boys play. I've seen them once 
They're mm, right before kid. the season started right there, and I'm very curious they, to they see what the difference they say been to now. Say they're very good. I mean, you know, as long as you're in the gym like they do and uh, stuff, I mean, you know, big exciting. Uh, new district for us and stuff, and, you know, we've – We've fared very well so far, so uh, you know it's a big game. You uh, you, you gotta you try to get them on the road if you can't. You know mm -hmm. you gotta make up for them and get them at the house. But it would be very exciting to see us get Clinton at Clinton. Then next Monday, one week from tonight, it's the South Fork Physical Therapy Classic at Oneida High School. Three days of basketball up there Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We can tell you right now that our Lady Highlanders will be playing Sunbright next Monday. We can tell you that our boys will be playing Woodbury Forest, Virginia. The Tigers are an all-boys school in uh, Woodbury Forest, Virginia. That's actually the name of the town there, not too far from Richmond. Their enrollment's a little over 400 kids. Uh, they are a private boys' school. Uh, well, they have students from... 28 states and 28 countries that attend <laughs> Woodbury Forest High School. And that game will be on next Monday night, the 20th, at 5.30 for the Highlanders at the South Fork Physical Therapy Christmas Tournament. I think that the Highlander girls play the game before that. I think that's what uh, Coach King told me the other day. We had the first two, and then they would play the next two after that. I don't know how many games that they start out with on Monday, but uh, I'm sure there's a lot of teams – I uh, understand this, uh, that Farley team from uh, Memphis. Uh, Memphis is uh, up there. You know, and they was at Sunbright, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a few weeks ago in a little play day, play day thing they had down there. So it would be some good basketball. I think Seymour's up there. So, you know, it would be, uh, be, uh, be some good basketball for three days. Yeah, I said our Lady Highlanders play uh, Sunbright. The Oneida teams, girls and boys, they have the nightcaps that night the last and the next to last and then the last game. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the Oneida boys play Seymour. The Oneida girls play. I, I think they play Seymour also. Seymour if, also. If I just, I just trying to look at the website. Coach King said he had it completed, but uh, it wasn't out, but I'm sure it'll be out in the next few days. But I just looking at the uh, TWS you know, website and it had them playing Seymour too. If that's right, you never, sometimes you can tell by that and sometimes you can't. Right. And then after that, we'll, Go cool. back to basketball action after Christmas. At least the boys do. Uh, the following Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I think the boys are in uh, a uh, Maryville Christmas tournament down there. Right boys right. only, not the girls. And that's our first game is against Fulton. Interesting matchup. Can't <laughs> wait to can't really wait to see that game there because Fulton was our nemesis last year, defeating us, I think, three times, if not all four. I know they beat us in the district final and in the regional final. Those were the ones that really counted there. So it yep. um, be exciting to watch what Coach Jody Wright has and the Fulton Falcons have next. It'll be two weeks from tonight at Maryville. Let's go ahead and take this extended break. Uh, we'll step aside for, gosh, we got so much time. Let's try four minutes. That'll give us time to catch our breath here a little bit and then get you back and start talking about this matchup between our Highlanders and the Powell Panthers. <laughs> 